drives some really values technology. It's very sort of cutting edge. Uh, it's very dynamic. You know, so I thought maybe I'll look into it. So I just on a whim I emailed the chair, um, and he told me about his vision for Ryerson, and everything that he wanted for Ryerson was what I was looking for in a school. And so in my mind, I was going to be telling him, you know, it would be cool if Ryerson did this. And before I could say anything, he was telling me these sort of big, sort of enthusiastic eyes about, you know, we're going to have this and we're going to do that. And we are going to become leaders um, in, in psychology and in health research. And it was funny because I had already accepted a faculty position at Duke and I was offered a faculty position at Stanford. And so here's this new chair telling me, well, you're gonna to have to do this, this, and this in order to come to Ryerson. Um, so I just thought it was very intriguing that he just had a vision of excellence. And, uh, and I just watched from afar and everything that he had said he was going to do, uh, he did, and he did it more quickly than I thought even possible. Everything that I hoped um, was going to be at Ryerson was here. So we had a new graduate program, a PhD program, uh, this building, which is ridiculously amazing, um, and uh, they were building innovative, state-of-the-art labs and in a, in a psychology department that's just sort of unheard of, and I asked about, would you build a sleep lab? Yes, we would, and everyone was happy and excited, and so it was everything that I wanted, so I said goodbye to Duke and came about a year ago, and I, I do look at insomnia just on, on its own, but mainly as a sort of a window into understanding depression. Um, so a lot of people think of me as an insomnia researcher, but really I'm somebody who's very much interested in trying to treat and prevent depression. Yeah, I think the main thing is really the importance of insomnia and depression. So some of the things I look at are um, what happens when we do or don't treat insomnia in people with depression. Um, I think a lot of people are interested in the biology behind that connection, um, but what is not explored are some of the um, thought-related things that we know are implicated in both insomnia and depression, and I like to try and put them together. The two disorders are kind of running along and influencing each other, and once you fix the one, it greatly improves the other, and sometimes it's enough momentum to actually cause a remission in the depression. It would save millions and millions of dollars. It's actually the uh, National Institute of Mental Health that funded this. Uh, we were really excited to get it, and it was actually when I was a faculty member at Duke uh, when I first received this grant. And, uh, and when I heard that I was going to get the Ryerson job, um, we started right away and we had to make a case to the U.S. government and to the NIH that said, we could do the study much better if you moved it to Toronto and to Ryerson specifically. And so we made a case. Um, we made it based on um, the, for one thing, the um, diversity that we have in the city and that um, the proximity and partnerships that Ryerson has with um, all of the hospitals in the area and clinics would really be a big plus. Ryerson is the place to be. Um, and if you ask anybody right now, um, they, anybody in mental health or at other universities around, they always have the same look on their face like, so what's going on at Ryerson? Um, because we just have grown exponentially, we have huge names now. Uh, the students are happy, they're excited, they're getting really uh, great reviews on their practicum sites when they're doing therapy out in the community. That's, that's what it's like to be here. I mean, when people say, why'd you leave Duke? I'm like, why wouldn't I leave Duke for Ryerson? It's exciting.